We're doing a presentation this evening um, about our policy on bullying and cyberbullying. But in addition to that, and more so, is the programs that we have instituted in the Greater Latrobe School District since our policy was enacted in 2012, was reviewed in 2015, and since then um, there has been no other policy changes. Uh, the review of this policy was really prompted by a letter and a comment, actually, that was given to the board in May um, of the last school year. And it uh, prompted us to really look at and review our programs in the district. And actually, um, we had to postpone it from last month because our principals weren't going to be able to be here because of, a, of an evening um, event at their schools. And so we're going to have many speakers this evening regarding this topic because it is so um, inclusive of a K-12 program. But we're going to start with Dr. Soltis, who is going to talk about the policy, um, its meaning, and so on. And then we're going to do a review of K-6, 7 and 8, and 9 through 12, as far as the programs that we've implemented and do within each of those areas um, to hopefully educate our students on bullying, cyberbullying, its effects, and so on with regard to the policy. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Soltis to start, and then we're going to move to the K-6 program. Okay, good evening, members of the board and the community. Uh, I'm here to talk about the board program. So I'd like to start off with, this is from the board policy, and it is the definition that is provided to us by Pennsylvania's um, School Board Association and the state of Pennsylvania. This is legislated definition. And I want to, I have highlighted some particular words that I think are very important as we talk about bullying. Uh, the first one is that bullying is intentional. It doesn't happen by mistake. Um, and it involves written and oral and it involves electronic communications. It is considered to be, or it needs to be, either severe, persistent, or pervasive. And the bully, bullying is, has one of three impacts. Either it, it interferes with the education of students, threatens the school environment, or substantially disrupts the school in some way. Now, for some students, it, it, bullying has been linked, or a student who is being bullied has been linked to things like truancy and poor grades. So it is an important, uh, okay. help, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it is an important issue to deal with. It is fitting that we review our bullying program at this point, and I'm going to take you back in history. Six years ago, during the 2010-11 school year, <clears throat> my school psychology intern and I reviewed a number of bully programs. We developed a short list and wrote some pros and cons as we read through the, those uh, different programs for each. And then we offered a training to faculty that they could attend and asked them to help us make the selection. They selected Bully Proof Your School program for a number of reasons, um, but some of the reasons had to do with, one, it was, it was flexible, um, yet comprehensive. It was a K-12 articulated program. It had a strong emphasis on elementary lessons and was and is not, uh, what is and what is not bullying. Talked about the good bystanders and reframed that as the caring community. Provided teachers with information on how to help students who are victims develop assertiveness skills. And it taught teachers how to support more vulnerable students. Um, after, um, after we selected the program in, um, 2000, and that in August of 2012, then we uh, launched the program. We presented to the, all of the faculty. Followed, followed that, I met with um, groups of parents, PTOs, um, met with groups of teachers, uh, the SAP team at the junior and senior high school, different building teams and helping them work through the development of the curriculum.
So it provides emphasis on the elementary lessons. Um, it, it also, uh, that caring community, I'm sorry. Okay. So one of the things that I have learned over the years in my research and my study is that punishment in, in the traditional sense has very little impact on a student with the bullying behaviors. We try to differentiate between punishment and discipline. And the way I describe that is, um, if you were disciplining someone, they would learn something from the discipline. Whereas what I was taught originally about punishment is it's quick, painful, and forgotten. The key word there is forgotten. So once you pay your dues, you're, you're, um, you're free to go about and do what you had been doing before. Whereas discipline teaches new behaviors. Uh, so the emphasis of the program that we use, the Bully Proof, um, Bully Proof Your Schools, teaches things to students who are both vic the victims or potential victims. I'd like to frame that as potential victims because um, if a student learns assertive skills, they have the skills to stand up to bullies. Our caring community is able to stand up to bullies. Uh, and on the other hand, when you have a student who is showing these bully behaviors, things that we try to teach them are um, to take a different frame of mind. We try to correct their thinking errors, and we try to teach them their skill deficits that they might be experiencing. I want to ask you a question. Does bullying happen in schools? Yes. Well, for that matter, does bullying happen in the community, in the world of work, around us? So I'm getting some nods. Yes, it happens. The most important thing that we can share with our students is how do you cope with that sort of behavior from someone else, and how do we help the student who has the behavior overcome those um, skill deficits, uh, correct their thinking difficulties. So the question is, what do we do? We address bullies with skill development uh, and teaching, and we help victims develop assertiveness in order that they might no longer be victims. And many people have been bullied in their life, but not all of them develop the persona of being a victim. So I'm going to hand this over to our elementary team, and they're going to talk about what they do at the elementary level that launches the learning about bullying. Good evening. As the team of elementary principals present this evening, we will not only highlight the Bully Fruiter School curriculum, which is consistent across the three elementary schools that Dr. Um, Soltis has spoken of, but we are also going to share with you a few of our special programs that we have in our schools that support that curriculum and those lessons. But I want you to know that our programs aren't just lessons given a few times a year. On a daily basis, each school participates in its own unique school-wide positive behavior support program. These programs truly become the culture of the school as well as the expectations. So I would like to introduce to you Mrs. Sherry Holler, who is going to speak with you first about Bully Proof Your School. As you have heard, we do have the curriculum called Bully Proof Your School. And it is in all three elementary buildings and I just want to give you a focus of what that curriculum looks like. Pretty much the counselor oversees the program. But the unique piece is the classroom teachers actually teach the lessons. They're accountable for working with their own students and relaying all of the information and having those rich discussions with the kids. The second piece of this is the lessons contain many aspects. After they do the lessons, there are handouts that are completed and are taken home. But we truly believe 
that when we focus on bullying, that we have to hold hands with the families. We have to be have a united front with school and family together. So after the lesson is taught, we send home parent letters as well as follow-up activities that the parents or guardians can do with their children when they're in the home. So they know exactly what the topic was for the day, what we did, and then how can they follow up at home. And then at the end of every unit, there is a parent survey. I need to take you through a few of the strategies, though, before I show you what happens in every grade level, because you may not understand if you don't see a couple of these slides. So to familiar yourself with one of the strategies that we teach beginning in kindergarten, which is a little revised from the slide that you see, but there's a strategy called Ha Ha So. And it just, it's a mnemonic device that helps the students remember what they can do um, in the event that they need to be uh, intervening in a bully situation or if they're confronted with a situation. And it stands for how to help, how to assert yourself, where does humor come in, how to avoid self-talk, what you can say to yourself, and then how, to you, how they own that uh, situation. So it's ha ha so, some of us have posters up with this, but again, it's taught beginning in kindergarten at a revised level. Another strategy is, another mnemonic device is called CARES. This is what we teach them uh, as far as what they can do if someone is being bullied. And you can see what the letters represent as far as problem solving, getting an adult to help, joining in, having empathy, and standing up to speak. In fifth grade, we change to cyberbullying. So we take that CARES and we make it CARES for online. So how can students help themselves or help others if they're being bullied online. So we teach them how to do uh, those aspects for connecting offline, saving what you have, reporting it, again, empathy, and the S stands for school, letting the school know what's going on. With that said, one of the <coughs> most important slides we have is this slide right here. In schools and anywhere, you have normal peer conflict. Kids that just aren't getting along. Friends that aren't talking to each other. And we try to teach the students what is normal peer conflict. We also provide this information to the parents. Something that is normal means that kids have equal power. They have been friends or they're at the same level. It happens just every once in a while. And we'll ask the kids, how many times does it happen? Did it happen once, twice? That helps us determine what type of situation we're involved with. Was it an accidental situation? Not very serious? Did, are both kids feeling the same way? Are they both upset over what has occurred? Um, not trying to get something in return. If they care about what is happening and they want to solve the problem, we're really dealing with something that is age appropriate. And just we need to help them through the social piece of this versus a situation that is true bullying. Basically, there is an imbalance of power. Somebody's using their size or just their status to overcome someone. If it's something that's happening over and over again, and it's done on purpose, and it's very serious, if one of the people are feeling power, or they're doing it for power and control, and the bully doesn't care, and he doesn't, he or she does not want to solve that problem. This is a, such an important piece to what we do in an elementary school. And you will see that as we go forward as I show you the lesson. The next slides, kindergarten through sixth grade, I'll just take you through uh, a cycle that will show you the topics that we deal with in each grade. You will see that there's pictures of books there. We do have a literature-based program in elementary school. We have a lot of stories that we use with the kids where the kids can relate to the characters. And that way we can have a lot of discussion. 
We also use videos. Uh, we use YouTube that, where they can see things happening. We can role play. You will see in kindergarten and first grade, the topics are listed on your screen. They are the same. There is never mention of a bully in kindergarten or first grade. We really talk about friendship. What is a friend? How do you join a group? Many kids don't even know how to become part of a group at recess or somebody's in station work. So we do a lot of, of work with that. When do you tell a teacher and when do you work it out? What is tattling versus telling? So that is all uh, focused using those books there. First grade has the same type of focus as far as friends go. Because they're in first grade, we will talk a lot about old friends versus new friends, because they would have had friends last year, and now they have new friends this year. Again, we spend time how to join a group. Um, we also begin talking about conflict uh, with the parents. We'll provide information to them. Again, going back to that screen I showed you earlier. But you have to realize that first graders uh, are just learning their social skills. And they are selfish at times. They want their own way at times. They love to tattle. Um, they may not want to play with someone, but that doesn't mean they're bullying. They just need help developing socially. So that is the focus in KM1. When we move to second grade, you are going to see that is where we will start talking about a bully. Again, we will talk about conflict versus bullying, friendship versus kindness. We will also introduce the ha ha so's and the cares, and we'll do a lot of role playing so that they can relate to victims as well as being a helper. Third and fourth grade have these same topics. We will use different literature. We'll dig in a little bit deeper. In third grade, we will talk to them and spend a lot of time on evaluating a one-time event versus bullying. Again, tattling versus telling. It may sound silly to you, but it's such an important component to our program. And we also talk to them about being assertive using ha ha so. How can you use those concepts to really truly intervene um, to help out and so that you do not become a victim, as well as the CARES strategy. In fourth grade, again, you're going to see the concepts are the same. We really start talking about name calling at this grade, you know, what that means and how it makes people feel. Again, conflict versus bullying and making decisions based on the ha ha so strategy and cares. As I said earlier, fifth grade turns to cyberbullying. And the concepts for the cyberbullying program are listed on your screen. We take a lot of time and talk to them about what is just for fun versus cyberbullying. Because everything kids post is not necessarily bullying. They do think it's funny, but they don't realize how it affects the people on the other side. So we do spend a lot of time on that, as well as using the ha ha so to stop the cyberbullying. In grade six, the same concepts are taught. At this level, we start giving them statistics on bullying, where they can actually see numbers and how people are affected. We continue the conflict versus bullying. We also use YouTube videos. One of them is, uh, what happens if uh, you're charged as a bully? Um, where does that go? When do the police get involved? They do watch a lot of videos determining how to implement the ha ha so strategies, as well as CARES. And one of the culminating projects for sixth grade is to create presentations to promote a bully-free school, and they will share those with grades two, three, and four. Our next presenter is Mrs. Stewart. The elementary schools have numerous um, special programs 
that we bring into the schools that support the Bully Proof Your School curriculum and help us stop out bullying. One of the programs um, that we do have is the Blackburn Center Bullying Harassment Program. Representatives from the Blackburn Center come into the schools to present lessons that mimic the Bully, bully Proof Your School program. Each lesson involves introduction to the very specific topic that you can see on the slide, followed by a literature connection, videos, role playing, or some similar, similar activity, and ends with, again, a handout that the students complete and take home to share with their families. As you can see, the younger students learn about what bullying is and what to do if you are being bullied or see someone being bullied. The older students learn about what a frenemy is and how to get out of a frenemy relationship and about harassment and how that connects to social bullying. Moving into October, we will support the National Bully Prevention Month, which is in October. On a daily basis, students will hear on the announcements tips about bullying. For example, students may hear this tip one day. What is popular is not always right. What is right is not always popular. Take responsibility for your actions and always do what is right, even if that right is not popular. Decide to stop bullying and instead tell people you care. If you stop hanging out with other bullies, this may not be the popular choice, but it's the right choice. So that's one tip that they may hear throughout the month. We will also share tips on if you are being bullied, reminding students that it's not their fault. No one deserves to be bullied and ask for help. And by asking for help, that is not tattling. It is the right thing to do. We also address the student who may realize that they are bullying others. And we encourage them to find the help of an adult in the building or at home or somewhere in the community to help stop being a bully and become a better friend. We also address the cyberbullying and we teach the students to save the evidence and show it to an adult as soon as possible so that the adult can help stop the bullying. So as the month goes on, they will receive these tips on a daily basis. Also, on October 3rd this year is World Day of Bullying, Bullying Prevention, where on this day we will ask everyone to wear a blue shirt and join us in solidarity to stop bullying and cyberbullying. And now we have Mrs. Becky Pellis to talk with you about our school-wide positive behavior program. As Mrs. Stewart mentioned earlier, all three elementary schools, as well as the, the junior high and high school, we all have school-wide positive behavior support programs within our buildings. That does become our culture of the building. Even though each of our cultures might be a little bit different and what we call it might be different, the same goal is consistent through all the buildings. So it's a school-wide system that supports and includes proactive strategies for defining, teaching, and supporting appropriate student behaviors to create a positive school environment that we strive for every day at Greater Latrobe. Here at the bottom, you're going to see um, a punch card. That's from LES, and I'm going to talk about LESs here in a moment. You see a bulletin board from Mountain View from their Caring Cats, and you also see how, to, um, how Full Is Your Bucket, which is part of the Bucket Brigade at Bagley Elementary School. First here is BES, so Bagley's uh, School-Wide Positive Behavior Support Program is called a Bucket Brigade. Um, they focus on a positive character trait throughout the month. They recognize this monthly with a student in each home room that exemplifies that trait. And within that, they have a monthly lunch with Mrs. Swigert, our superintendent, um, so that they're able to share the great things that are happening at Bagley Elementary School. At LES, their school-wide positive behavior support program is called Wildcat Roars. Roars standing for respect others, observe safety rules, act responsibly, reach for success, and show kindness. Through this, they get cats cash, which is the punch card that you saw earlier. Um, and they, as, as they are 
Following through with roars, they get punches. They earn rewards by accumulating so many punches. If you're at the 100% club, you get your picture taken, name on a poster, and again, there's that monthly lunch with Mrs. Swagger. And finally, at Mountain View Elementary School, our program is called Caring Cats. Cats standing for caring and taking a stand. It is our positive um, character trait each month. There's a word that we focus in on, and throughout that month, um, the homeroom teachers will determine one student in each homeroom that exemplifies that positive character trait. Again, they meet uh, once a month with Mrs. Swiger to talk about the great things that are happening in Mountain View and why they are chosen as that month's um, caring cat. Also, throughout the building, we have classroom caring cats, which shows the entire classroom is following through with the school-wide positive behavior support, and so they are able to achieve different cat paws, and our each quarter, the homeroom, is rewarded for having the most cat paws on their door. Now it is time to hear from our secondary program, I believe, starting with Mr. Schivitz. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I will begin the secondary program. And as you can see, we have five principles spanning grades 7 through 12. And so I will be speaking on behalf of uh, grades 7 and 8. But just to sort of kick off uh, the second part of this presentation, I think that we all sort of stand with a consistent message of what you just heard from the elementary school. Obviously, what a, a litany of education they provide to our students as they enter junior high school and they enter their high school years. And, and really, if you think about, um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel uh, per se. We want to make sure that we continue that consistent message. We want to keep consistent with the education that we're providing our students. But I like to say that we also like to put in action at this point. As students enter that seventh grade year, um, and this is my first year as a 7-8 principal, what I've learned in the first few weeks of school here, and, and just what a wonderful group of, of children we have, how impressionable they are in the junior high school. How impressionable they are with the groups of friends they make, how impressionable they are with things they see on social media, how impressionable they are when they see their classroom teachers, how they treat each other, how they're acting, uh, how we're acting as principals when we're speaking to them in different situations. And so we want to just be able to continue that consistent message, but we also want to be able to lead by example, and we also want to put them in situations that empower them. And so if that means talking with our student council, if that means I know that we all sort of a, a, adopt the philosophy of take care of each other, and we preach that to our students all the time. We want to see our students the first day of school, and we challenge them. If you see somebody sitting alone in the cafeteria, what are you doing about it? Who's going to be the student who stands up for what's right and invites that student over to sit at their table? Or if somebody's being picked on, who's going to stand up and who's going to come to the principal's office and tell us that? And who's going to understand that that's not talent, that that's being a good person, that that's character, and that's standing up for what's right, and that we try to give them the tools uh, necessary. A lot of students, you know, in elementary, as they're coming to junior high, are scared of our office, uh, in a sense. And we want to make sure we understand that, or they understand that it's an open door philosophy. They can come in here, and we're here to help. And they have to join us um, in this process of eliminating bullying from our schools. If you look at the second bullet, you're going to hear that a lot tonight. The caring community. Um, that we're trying to put in place, and that's from the teachers, that's from the students, and that's from all of these programs that you're going to see here in a second. And then <clears throat> school-wide positive behavior supports. What are we doing to show our students and showcase our students that are doing things great every single day? And, and I'm proud to be an alumni of Greater Lake Trail. We have 95% of our students are doing fantastic things. They're treating people with respect every single day. And we try to make sure that we have supports in place to showcase those students and, and, and use those students, in a sense, um, to be an example for their peers. Um, and hopefully that's a contagious experience. A few things, and I'm kind of speaking on behalf of the junior and senior high school here. Grades 7 through 12, all of our teachers went through three different trainings over the past few years. And as you can see, they're transgender, uh, suicide awareness, and racial sensitivity training. And obviously, um, sensitive topics in a sense, topics that you know, statistics have proven um, you can be pinpointed with students struggling with bullying. But we also wanted to make sure that within those trainings, we gave our 
teachers some empowerment that they, and I will tell you sitting in there, they were able to see some things that I think opened their eyes a little bit. They were able to put themselves in the shoes of some students, some different uh, populations of st students, some different groupings of students, and we're able to take that back to the classroom. We, it generated some fantastic discussion. How can we uh, relate to those students? How can we uh, mentor those students? And, and they came up with things on their own as far as creating mentoring programs, um, cer certain uh, teachers taking students under their way, certain safe zones in the school for students to be able to report to. So again, each one of those trainings were for our staff to enhance their own knowledge and put some more tools in their toolbox uh, to go forward. And some common programs, 7 through 12, you'll hear the high school uh, repeat this, but we have a student assistance program in both buildings. And what that is is a group of teachers, principals, counselors, a school nurse, as well as community liaisons too, uh, where teachers can make referrals. If they're seeing um, some at-risk behavior, could be academic, could be behavior, could be something reported to them, we can bring those students up in a confidential meeting and we can then begin the process of monitoring those students, sending out uh, a survey of sorts which has their teachers monitor what are they doing in class, are we seeing consistent behavior, and then we, would look, we obviously contact the parents, we let them know and be as transparent as possible, and offer them supports. We have supports within the school that the student assistance program can establish, as well as liaisons outside of school um, that we can set up with out of school counseling that you will hear further. Second, we've been joined with the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Grant over the past, I believe it's three years now. Uh, who have provided us with some wonderful guest speakers. And they do that twice a year, it seems, in October with Bowling Month, and we do Red Ribbon uh, Month, and also around the end of the year, May. And drug and alcohol, I know this is a bullying presentation, but it's, it really goes hand in hand. We talk about uh, peer influences, we talk about character, we talk about peer pressure and things that these students will face, and they've been actually able to provide us with some guest speakers from uh, outside and around the country to come in and speak to our students in a large audience um, and really connect with them. And then you'll hear common programs 7 through 12 is our health curriculum. All students in the secondary take health in 8th grade as well as online in the senior high school. So they're getting that twice. And in both instances, uh, talking to Mr. Gorinsky, who's the health teacher at the junior high school, they're going through all of these things that were mentioned earlier by elementary coping skills talking about the difference between conflict and bullying, talking about um, how, to, how to reach out. He actually has students create packets of local organizations that they can go to, because some students just aren't comfortable coming to the school. Some students want to come in here and get out, and, and he actually has a brochure that they actually go out and research different uh, avenues that hopefully they can take with them for the rest of their life and, and actually know what's in, available in the community. So it's a really uh, good example of what we're doing in the health curriculum. So Mrs. DeCaslo, the assistant principal of grades 7 through 9, is going to highlight some specific programs in the junior high school. Good evening. Okay, so we have a number of different programs at our junior high. Um, what, what both Mr. Shibitz and I have found is that peer interaction is going to be a huge part of our job this year. We have certainly found that a lot of our students have some amazing skills coming out of our elementary program. We have a lot of students sticking up for other students. We have a lot of students exhibiting a lot of positive behaviors. But we still have students struggling. Okay, We're going to be working with those students one-on-one -on -one as much as we can. But we have a number of programs in place to help these students and also to help the bullies and help the victims as well, okay? Um, one of those programs is the St. Vincent Prevention Projects. Um, they pu actually push into our classroom. In our seventh grade history lessons, they come in and they, they do a program called Project Alert. These are research-based programs that are effective for this age level. All seventh graders uh, get to see this in their history class, and they cover programs for information like conflict resolution, Okay, uh, violent behaviors, bullying behaviors. So they, go, they talk about a number of things in these history classes throughout the year. Um, and again, they're, they're research-based programs. In the eighth grade health classrooms, we then have safe intervention projects come back 
and do what is called a Project Alert Booster, where they come into the classroom for three sessions for all eighth grade students um, to discuss similar ideas, similar topics. St. Vincent Prevention Projects also sends counselors into our building, and they develop support groups. And these are amazing experiences for groups, uh, for at-risk groups. We'll have six to eight week sessions of targeted students um, that have either been involved or been in some way been a part of a number of different negative peer interactions, such as bullying or cyberbullying, or struggling to fit in, um, or struggling just simply with their social skills uh, in different aspects of their school career and their community career. So St. Vincent comes into our, our school through a number of different programs and is able to help work with our students and help them um, with all of these different social skills, including bullying. Our junior high counselors also do an amazing job um, through a number of structured programs. Transition Camp is a program that we offer to our at-risk students. Those students are identified at the elementary level and coming into seventh grade. Students that may struggle with the transition from the sixth grade classroom to the junior high building. Things change significantly from elementary to junior high school. And a lot of the students that may have issues with that transition are identified and invited to a transition camp. A large part of that transition camp is one, making friends from all of the different buildings, meeting new kids, and discussing normal conflict versus bullying extremely important for these at-risk youth that are going to feel extremely vulnerable when they set foot into that junior high. So it's a really, really nice program. Um, we also have a lot of fun. I know that I got blasted with a water balloon during this year's transition camp right in the face, all down in front of me. It was very, very fun for actually the administrators as well to get to meet the, that group of students. So it was a great opportunity um, for that. Our counselors also go into the classrooms and they complete a number of lessons, some of which deal with bullying. They also introduce our students to their services, which is an amazing opportunity for our students. Um, we talked this summer and realized that a number of us as administrators, when we were in high school, didn't know our guidance counselors. We didn't know them. We didn't know who they were when we were in high school. I had no idea. My, my helped me with the college application, but I had no idea. So we're starting a program here and continuing to get our counselors out into our classrooms so all of our kids know these counselors, feel comfortable with the counselors, and the counselors are providing services right in the classroom as well. Our counselors then um, look for need and develop targeted, targeted small group discussions where they'll bring, again, at-risk students for a particular issue together and they'll discuss that. They'll have small group counseling sessions with those students. So our counselors are doing amazing things every day for our students, both programmatically but also just individually with, their, with the students. A few other things that our teachers and counselors do. Um, one you've heard from the elementary about their positive uh, behavior support system. Right now, Mr. Shivitz and I, along with a group of teachers and counselors, are developing a program for the junior high school. We plan to incorporate all of those character aspects that are included in the elementary uh, program, filling the bucket program, the caring cats program, along with a few uh, more mature, uh, more junior high like character um, character uh, ideas. Um, so we're really excited to develop this program. Mr. Shivitz and I could have sat down over the summer to develop it on our own. We did wait. We wanted the input from our teachers. Our teachers are going to be an extremely important aspect of this program. If they don't understand this program, they're not going to participate in this program, and it's not going to be a successful program. So currently, we have some really solid ideas, and we plan to have this program in place late September, early October. Um, we're going to continue to reinforce the positive behaviors uh, that our students exhibit. Okay? So we're, we're very excited. Hopefully, we'll have an update on that soon. Um, our counselors, along with our teachers and our student council, also developed a new student breakfast where any student that is new to the district is actually invited to a breakfast where they'll meet student council members 
They'll meet teachers. The counselors and the administ administrators will also be present. And it's an opportunity to make those new students feel at home, to make them feel less susceptible to these bullying style behaviors. Our, our social studies classes, our history classes, are also required to review our handbook. And part of that review is reviewing the bullying uh, policy, the board bullying policy. Um, and the seventh grade team uh, does a lot of that. One thing that I want to discuss is most of what we have up here are school-wide structure programs. But what we have seen from our teachers is absolutely amazing. They saw a need with one of the classes, I believe it was last year's class, for continued character development. On their own, they developed a number of different lessons, a number of different posters, um, and they actually have started to hang those in the walls. There's no structured program. There's no reward. It's simply our teachers caring about our kids. And again, leading by example, saying, this is really important. We're going to make this part of our everyday school community. We're going to talk about this, we're going to resolve conflict, and we're going to move forward. Um, so I, I just have to say that I've, I've been working with these teachers for three to four weeks, and I'm unbelievably impressed by what they do with the students um, in, in, in various different aspects, but especially in the aspect of character development and dealing with negative peer interaction. Very, very impressed. At this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Shibitz, and he's going to talk a little bit about the administrative side of, of bullying. Thank you. Sure, and I, I would just conclude here, and I just have a slide to go before we turn it over to the senior high school, but I second what Ms. DeCasselo said. If you notice the last few slides, the, the amount of time these things take, uh, the amount of time that character education um, takes in the classroom, or our social studies classrooms, or our different push-ins to, to various things, but we value that, and, and our teachers value that, and we allow for that time, and you think of the job they have to do with the, the common core and the standards and, and everything that they're doing um, to teach the curriculum, but really buying into this and making sure that this is at the forefront. And I second what she said. Um, Boy, I'll tell you what, I've seen some people in my first few weeks, they're really rolling up their sleeves and they're just communicating back and forth. Watch this lunch table, watch this group of students, and really advocating uh, to make sure that everybody feels comfortable. Is it ever going to be 100%? Uh, I sure hope so. Uh, but it's, it's definitely an uphill battle, but we have a group of teachers that are just doing a great job looking at that. So just to, to go off of what she said, the administrative disciplinary response, um, I enjoyed what Dr. Soltis mentioned earlier. You know, we could talk here, it would be an easy job. If, if I could wipe my hands clean every day and, and I simply hand out a detention or an in-school and that fixes the problem of bullying. But it's, it's proven that that doesn't do it. Um, you know, a lot of these students, um, we need to incorporate their parents at home. We need to get them supports in the school. We need to get them adults in the school uh, that they can relate to, that can take them under their wing. And so we really want to, and I believe the elementary school said it, have a unified approach with the school and parents. We want to make sure that whether the student is the victim, the we whether the student is the aggressor, that we're being as transparent as possible. And, and yes, we're going to be consistent. We're going to have, we're going to try to be as no tolerance as possible, but we know that everything's not black and white. There's all kinds of different things that come into different situations. And we want to make sure what we can do comprehensively is make sure we let parents know what's going on and we let our teachers and our counselors know so that we can follow up with that student and make sure that they have uh, all of the tools necessary to cope with these things that they're facing. If we go to the last slide, just looking ahead what the junior high, uh, Mrs. DeCasselo mentioned we want to grow our school-wide positive behavior support program. So we are about to roll that out shortly. We're, we're going to have things going like an ice cream social or being mentioned and different things that would incorporate parents coming into the building as well as teachers uh, recommending these students for all sorts of reasons, may I add. Uh, not just for academic success, not just for um, character things, but looking at students who might not be recognized otherwise. Might, and, and possibly empower them uh, to feel a part of this community um, and make sure that they're doing appropriate things. The second bullet, uh, I want to take my hat off to, to these four people here who have done a wonderful job uh, discussing programs with our junior high school and our ninth graders on social media and technology interactions. Officer Dare and Dr. Pinus did a wonderful job, and I know Mr. Krellick is going to talk about 
uh, at the beginning of the school year with our orientation to talk about what's going on online, to talk about appropriate social media um, consequences, also problems that people are facing. And Officer Dare was there to talk about the law enforcement side and how powerful that was for students to hear. He pulled out some technology that sort of blew your mind about what people can see. And if, and if, if people like us can see that, imagine what the police officers can see. And how he drove that home was just a fantastic thing for our students to witness. And also Mr. Perenka and Mr. Krellick uh, did a program last year, I believe, for all seventh graders entitled Your Words Matter and went into seventh grade classes and discussed different examples in our society of students that, uh, that our kids could relate to, um, saying things online, consequences that resulted in that, and some really current issue things that were just extremely powerful and really hit home for our students. So we can talk about the, the, the definitions of bullying, but really using examples and, and getting down to their level on social media and showing them real life things. Uh, is extremely important. And moving forward, we talked about surveying our faculty and having a questionnaire on bullying, followed by monthly mini faculty lessons. So on the first slide, I talked about all the trainings our teachers are going through. We want to continue that. We don't want that to be a one and done thing. We want them to continue to think about best practices and how we can best reach these students. And we're also throwing around here in the future um, a 40 developmental asset survey for all seventh grade students. And to, to kind of get back to our core, back to our roots of showing students what are the character traits, uh, does it, what, what does it take to have developmental assets and be a successful citizen, be, have successful character moving forward. And we want to be able to track those students and see where they come in at seventh grade and possibly where they end up in high school or beyond and see where we can um, create our programs in a better light and better format for our students. So without any further ado, I know Mr. Crowley is jumping out a bit to get up here. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chivas. Mrs. DeCasolo mentioned the utilization of the St. Vincent Prevention Programs. We are very excited at the high school to continue this valuable program with the new, relevant, and age-appropriate topics at the senior high school for the very first time. Recently, I had an opportunity to sit down with Mr. Greg Norton, who is a recently retired Pennsylvania State Trooper who worked primarily in the narcotics division for the state police. With his wealth of knowledge and experience and background, I am thrilled that Mr. Norton has been hired by the St. Vincent Prevention Programs, and he will be delivering these programs directly to our students at the senior high school grades 9 through 12. The first program that Mr. Gordon will be delivering is called Too Good for Drugs, which all ninth grade students in their physical education and health classes will receive in 10 sessions. This program focuses uh, on peer pressures and peer influences and has been delivered to our ninth grade in previous years. But with Mr. Gordon presenting, uh, we anticipate this program being adjusted and appropriate for the students in grade nine. Other programs that we have uh, that will be new for this year is in, in grade 10, 11, and 12, four sessions each, with grade 10 focusing on peer conflict and drug abuse, grade 11, over-the-counter medicines and underage drinking, and grade 12, drug-free workplace and graduation expectations. Again, we are thrilled to be extending our partnership with St. Vincent College Prevention Programs, knowing that drug usage and abuse oftentimes enters young people's lives when they feel desperate for acceptance by their peers or fail to have the necessary support system in their life and are vulnerable to adverse behaviors. Next thing I would like to talk about, and our junior high administrators talk a little bit about it as well, deals with the concept of transition. We've really been focusing on transition the last several years, talking about transition from the elementary school to the junior high, but we haven't done a whole lot of transition from <coughs> junior high to senior high, which can be equally as challenging for students as well. You may have heard, or you may not have heard, that the first day of school was quite unique here at the, at the secondary level. Um, we had a discussion sometime in July about uh, the changes that were going to take place here in the senior high, and our discussion led to the fact that we're going to have 675 students in the senior high for the very first time that have never been in this building. 
uh, which is uh, that's quite a difference to having only one class being a sophomore to do. So with both the freshmen and the sophomores being in the senior high for the first time, we thought we had to do something a little bit different than what we've done in previous years. In previous years, we held an orientation for 10th grade, typically around the second week, third week of August. Uh, it was a week before uh, the teachers arrived. And we had a fairly uh, good attendance. About 75% of our students would attend 10th grade orientation. But that still leaves you 50 plus students that aren't there who show up on the first day of school, that don't have uh, their schedules, they don't know where they're going, and so on. Uh, so thinking about having both the freshmen and the sophomores and having a traditional orientation, we thought that, that would not be the correct course of action. So we decided to do something different. We made August 29th, the first day of school on our calendar, a day for freshmen and sophomores solely that we could focus all of our attention on them. Consequently, from our juniors and seniors who had an extra vacation day, we didn't receive one complaint from them uh, about this change. They were okay with that. But um, going into this day, you know, we went into it with a little bit of anxiety, not knowing what it would look like. But by the end of the day, we all sat down and agreed that it was probably the most valuable time we could have spent with our freshmen and sophomores acclimating them to this building um, uh, in the senior high. <clears throat> we, during this day, we invited all of our students, our ninth and 10th grade students, uh, along with our entire faculty, uh, to work together. Uh, and we had several different presentations that were uh, going on that day. We had a bullying presentation. And this was put on by um, Mr. Prepka, who was very busy doing this presentation, along with Ms. Ms. Jessica Scapora, who is our global studies teacher for 11th grade, uh, who talked to students about their words mattering, very similar to what we did with the 7th grade, but adjusted for that audience being 9th and 10th graders. We also had a social media awareness presentation, and this was, uh, presentation was delivered by Dr. Pinus and Officer Rob Bear, our school resource officer with a focus on cyberbullying and sexting, which is a very important topic that students need to be aware of and certainly need to be aware of the consequences uh, that could follow if they are participating in some of those adverse behaviors. Ms. Jillian Malloy was able to provide a picnic lunch for our 9th and 10th grade students outside the courtyard, just welcoming that day as well. So it was a very welcoming uh, day for our students and very relaxed in getting them acclimated to the building. But the highlight of our day was probably the building tours, which was put on by our student council, was delivered by our student council, who came to our building and broke in small groups, and they took small groups around the building and toured the entire senior high complex and wore their shirts, they wore one shirts that said we were all in this together. And I can tell you that, you know, it's always an eye-opening experience for us. Whenever students hear from other students, it is much more meaningful as opposed to hearing from adults. And they were asking questions during these tours, they were smiling, they were enjoying uh, their time with the student council, and it really seemed to have a strong impact. And I will tell you again, at the end of the day, uh, we, we sat back and said, um, it was probably the best thing we could do, just bring the freshmen and sophomores in for that one day, and just giving them a walkthrough, if you will. Because when they came to school on the 30th, the 675 new faces, they knew where they were going. They felt confident coming to the senior high. They felt confident and excited to, to go and meet their teachers. Um, they knew what they were doing, and it was a great way to transition them into the senior high. So we're hoping that will certainly um, translate into our students feeling comfortable here and willing to meet the challenges ahead. Thank you. Here's our uh, student council, EWCTC students, some EWCTC students, and other uh, members of the high school um, student body leading or dressed in their uh, safety orange shirts. Um, <laughs> they say we are all in this together on the back side. So and as Mr. Pollock said, this was the highlight of the day. Uh, as these tours were going on, students were giving tips, tricks uh, of the trade throughout the building, um, talking about what you can get away with one teacher, what you can't get away with another teacher. <laughs> Uh, all good conversation, and it's, it's all about building that uh, positive school culture and, and really engaging these freshmen and welcoming well, freshmen and sophomores and welcoming them into, our, into that high school. Okay, this is a tweet. Uh, yes, I am on Twitter, and I told the 11th and 12th grade students that on the very first day, and I got a, a pretty good chuckle out of that. 
Uh, we found that to be pretty comical that I am on Twitter. Um, I read a tweet this summer uh, from an 11th grade student that said, I would rather move to Antarctica and live with the penguins than go back to school. Combine that with another article that I read that, that pretty much talked about how high school, um, school engagement among high school students is, is at an ultimate low right now. So we talked administratively and we, we said, what can we do? Kids come to school on the first day full of energy, full of enthusiasm. How do we capture that energy and enthusiasm so that kids want to be in our building? So we met with our teachers on, a very, our, on the second day of in-service and asked them to think outside of the box for their lesson plans on day one. Kids do not want to come to school and sit through eight periods of syllabus and rules. Okay? They don't want to hear what they can't do. They want to hear about what they can do and opportunities that they have in this building. And that's really what we focused on. And you can read the tweet uh, from Michael Linson, who is a, a veteran teacher, 25 years experience, and an author of five or six books. Um, basically saying we want kids running out of these doors, running home, telling their parents, hey, I have the best teacher, I love my, love my classes, I want to be in school. That's really what we were focusing on. And here's uh, two pictures. Uh, a lot of teachers did participate in this. This is one example, Mrs. Souter's chemistry class. Uh, students were making ice cream. And uh, as the kids were making ice cream, she was talking about the different uh, chemical reactions that were taking place. Uh, so really, we're, we are focusing on building that positive school uh, culture and really engaging students in school. And I, I talked about being on Twitter. I, I think it's important, and I told students on day one, follow me. I, I'm posting a lot of good things that are happening throughout the high school on a daily basis. I think it's important for kids at this age to have positive role models that they are following um, because a lot, of, a lot of people out there to follow are probably not the best influence for them. So I, I think it's great that for students to have these positive influences. Um, so we're trying to do our part uh, just by posting. These pictures were posted on my Twitter account. Uh, I'll be posting a, a picture from Anna and Vija uh, at tonight's board meeting on there as well. So a lot of, a lot of good things happening in the high school. Uh, follow me, James16, on Twitter. Uh, I'd like to turn it next over to Mr. Engel. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few of the programs that, that we have in place at the high school that recognize um, and build a school community that's positive and a culture that's positive. These programs address self-esteem and interventions for social and emotional and academic issues. The first one that many people recognize is Breakfast of Champions. And uh, Breakfast of Champions, uh, of course, you know, is probably one of our most popular uh, social work and um, uh, programs that we have in place. And, you know, each month, uh, faculty members choose a student who is recognized because they've shown improvement or they've shown growth, a change in attitude. Um, and so we tell the teachers, choose these students based on their 40, de 40 developmental assets. And, and, and don't always choose that student that uh, has a 4.0 and is the star of the classroom. We're going to choose those students and identify and recognize positive changes that those students have made in the classroom. And so we have that breakfast every uh, month. And of course, we have parents and students and counselors, teachers, uh, administration, we have board members that show up every month as well. And um, the program recognizes those students that have made a positive change. Uh, and we believe that it really continues to build a positive culture in our building and a caring school community. Uh, Mr. Shivitz uh, mentioned the student assistance program. Uh, and just to elaborate a little bit, that is a collaboration between SPHS, Westmoreland County Mental Health Services, Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission, and school districts in Westmoreland County. SAP basically uh, identifies students who are struggling with uh, life stressors, dealing with social and emotional issues, uh, and we recognize those students. We help parents identify those problems that students may be having, and we give parents the tools uh, within the school and in the community to help deal with those, uh, those problems that students may be having. Our academic resource team consists of teachers, counselors, and administration that identify students who are having academic struggles. And these students meet with their designated advisors and work through areas of current concern and follow through with any needs that students may have. Very simply, uh, team members will help students setting up times to get into the tutoring center, connecting them with math or language labs teachers, we're simply helping them to be organized with their studies uh, and we help uh, those students uh, work through those issues. For seniors, it's a little bit more intensive. 
Uh, those that are struggling with a particular class that they may meet, uh, we may meet with seniors two or three times a week towards the close of school in order to make sure that they're doing what they need to do in order to walk across that stage and get a diploma. Uh, the next is our mentoring program, and this is, this is kind of changing a little bit. In the past, it has consisted of teachers, counselors, and administrators that meet to discuss students that are struggling socially or emotionally. We would talk about these students and we would try to get them a little bit of help and try to put, put them in the right direction with people that they may to make connections with. Uh, moving forward with the influx of our career pathways, we see using the 40 Developmental Assets Survey and using that to identify students who may be struggling socially, emotionally, and getting those students that extra help. We also see this survey as a way to identify and keep track of students that have not connected with a teacher or a counselor and putting those people in the right places to connect with those students and mentor them. Uh, simply put, it's a process of survey those students, identify the students, connect, meet, and then mentor them. Uh, career Pathways, we've talked a lot about Career Pathways, and really Career Pathways is a link to the student's future. Uh, students choose their Career Pathways to continue throughout their high school career to explore and develop interests that will expose them to careers within their career cluster. And maybe they don't necessarily know exactly what career they want to go into, but they may eliminate careers that they know they don't want to go into, and that is just as important. Uh, they choose that career pathway. It not only allows those students to have meaningful input into the courses that they take, but it also allows those students to take ownership of their education. And when you have ownership of your education, you're making relevant choices, it becomes a positive learning experience, and it becomes, the school becomes important to them. And finally, the last program that we have is our Remembering Out of Volunteer Drug Testing Program. This is the third year that we've had this program. And consistently, we have about 100 students that sign up every year and voluntarily sign up to take a drug test. And it's random. We may test two or three students a week. We call them down and they pick out of a hat a number, and that number corresponds with a different type of test that they may take. And, and those students use that and on, on uh, college college applications, they use it on resumes, they use it on job applications, and they'll tell you, those students are proud to be part of that program, and they'll tell you that they're in that program. And really what it does is twofold. It's a resume builder, and it's also a way for students to say, no, I'm in the drug testing program, and it's a, it's a peer pressure thing. They can say no, and they have an excuse why they get put in that situation. So students are using that really um, in, in a good way. All of these programs help to build an environment that is conducive to a positive educational experience as well as building that caring community that we've talked about. So what are we doing for 2016, for the 2016-2017 school year? Uh, we had over 30 students uh, attend Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week um, this past summer. Uh, at Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week, we, Sweethearts and Heroes is a bowling presentation. We had two students come back and say, uh, tell Ms. Ringo or myself that, hey, we have to get this presentation in here. Um, it's a MMA fighter, it's a wrestler, it's a, it's a veteran that fought in the Iraq War that was uh, disfigured. Uh, they did an outstanding job according to the students. Ms. Ringo and I have been in contact with them. Uh, we're looking at bringing them, bringing them to the high school sometime in November or in January, whenever we can make work with their schedule and with ours. But they really focus on victims, bullying, and bystanders, empowered, and empowering bystanders to make a difference. Uh, and this is all part of being uh, part of that caring community. In the afternoon, they really focus on working uh, small group sessions with student council. It could be sports groups, whoever we choose, but they want a small group to really drive this point home with them. Uh, we are also starting a leader academy this year at the high school, which is sponsored by Chick-fil-A. Uh, these leader academies engage students in monthly leader labs. Our kickoff, our event kickoff is on Tuesday uh, at 7.15 here in the CSC. Um, kids are going to be boxing of about 900 meals, uh, which is all part of the kit that was shipped to us, and we'll be donating these meals to um, food banks within our community. Um, throughout these uh, leader labs, we focus on important leadership skills, and, and students will use these leadership skills to uh, lead or create a student-led community impact project uh, in April. Uh, and one example of a project that was given to us uh, was a senior citizen prom. So it's something where they'll have to fundraise, raise money uh, to support this um, community project uh, for whatever, for whichever they choose. 
We also been talking about the Boomerang Project, which is another transition program. Uh, it's the link crew that we'll be focusing on for high school. Uh, and you can see it, it starts out with that high school orientation, really welcoming the freshmen into the building. Then it's all about uh, building the relationships throughout the year with academic follow-ups, social follow-ups, and those different leader-initiated contacts. We will be sending an administrator and probably a counselor to get trained sometime early next year. Um, and we'll get that started for the 2017-2018 uh, school year. That pretty much ends the high school uh, presentation. I will now turn it back over to Dr. Soltz. I want to, um, I'm remembering um, this, we met on Friday to kind of review what we were going to present at today's board meeting. And Mr. Kralik said, you know, we really do a lot. And he's right. There are so many beautiful things that we do to help students be comfortable in their schools, to be able to come to us and talk with us about things that might be happening at home. Um, and although there were, uh, was a myriad of different kinds of programs that are presented, they all reflect on the school culture. And the school culture is what impacts students' uh, ability to get along with one another, um, the ability to stand up for students that they see that might be bullied, the ability to stand up for themselves. So in conclusion, I just want to say that you heard about lessons K to 6 and how we move away from that with a little bit at the junior high level, less, fewer lessons, more application of the lessons, and more targeted support of individual students that need that extra help in either the area of being a victim or the area of being a bully. The school-wide positive behavior support plans are articulated K-12. And then finally, how we, the programs that we utilize to support our caring community, K-12, that enhances the school experience for all students. So at that point, you know, are there questions? Yes, Ms. I'd just like to make a comment. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you guys for the hard work that you did. Thank you all. <laughs> what, what I want to say is that there's a couple of things that I don't want to hold anybody up to because I know it's getting late. But uh, people ask me, they say, Conrad, why are you getting interested in getting back on the school board after being there all the year. You guys are the reason because the way you treat our kids in this school system. And I want to thank you for the kids too. And one thing that I that really impressed me, and I know there's a lot of work and a lot of things up here, but the thing that hit me home the most was that you concentrate on the kindergarten in first and second grade. And I think that's where it's so important. It's kind of tough for us to work with some of the older kids after they're set their way. So I felt so good to see those programs you had up there. And I think if we build our kids from an early age, we'll have less bullying later in life. You're not going to have women. Yeah, God knows that. But I, I think another thing that we should do too is somewhere in there, I can't figure out a fancy word for it, but we all tell our kids to report bully. If you see it or you feel it or, or you're part of somebody picking on you, I think we need some kind of a witness protection program <laughs> where we should reach out to a kid maybe somewhere along the line and say, yeah, because like we talked about walking to a principal's office, how, you know, that's hard to do. And it's hard for a kid to run in there. So some way, I'd like to see you guys come up with something where you can get across to the kids, hey, come up to me sometime or talk to me out in the hall or, we're, we're you know, because kids are afraid of retaliation. Let's face it. They are afraid of retaliation and retribution. Right. Um, I would say that we have students that come forward on behalf of other students, and we have students that come forward on behalf of themselves. Uh, 
it's a hard thing to it do. It is. <laughs> and one of the hardest things is to convince students that if you don't come forward, it won't get better. Because you first have to test that out. And a lot of the students are afraid of what happens afterwards. And to be truthful, um, it, sometimes kids say, well, I knew you were going to tell, you know. Um, but when we follow through with that behavior, mm -hmm. things then get better. So we, you're right. We, but it is taught, believe me. I'm not sure what the uh, silver bullet is for helping students come forward. Yeah, that's, uh, I, that's you know, if I knew that, I could make a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any other questions, comments? Well, thank you for your attention. I, I just want to summarize that, um, to your point, um, recognize that students are not encouraged to only go to these people. Um, you know, there are staff available, whether it is a teacher, a classroom assistant, a custodian, a food service worker, a parent, a community member. So it is not just the administration and the, the focus of going into that office, quote unquote. And, and the culture is that you want students to encourage them to report this type of behavior because of how it makes somebody feel. But it's not only to um, discipline the student who is bullying, but also to empower the victim as to how they handle it. And it's, so it's twofold, and I think that is the uh, message uh, that comes across in Bully Proof Your Schools and as well as the 7 to 12 program. Um, we know that we are, Dr. Soltis is one of her first statements, we are not going to eradicate Greater Latrobe School District, the community of Greater Latrobe, or the state of Pennsylvania of bullying by any program. We recognize that. But I believe that in all of the programs that we have put into place, the relationships that our staff and our administrators understand are important with students and with their parents and the community members, that we have created a culture that helps students to report and helps us to deal with these situations. We are not always going to know that a behavior is going on, but we want to encourage everyone to report it so that we at least have an opportunity to do that. But we also recognize that we are not always going to please everyone with the reaction that we take when an incident occurs. We handle incidents in the manner in which we believe is best uh, fitting the situation, the age of the student, um, the programs that they have been through. Um, all of those things make a difference in the approach that an administrator or teacher um, makes regarding certain behaviors and certain things that happen. And we have to trust um, that those things that we do are altering the behavior. And that is the obvious, ultimate um, thing that we want to have happen, is that if a student displays a behavior that could be considered bullying or inappropriate or creating conflict, if what we do, what actions we take, change that behavior, that to me is success. And so when we talked about doing this program, I apologize that it is as long as it is. Um, but very clearly, there are so multifaceted as far as the things that we approach and how we approach different levels.